Hey guys, do you want to learn how to render wet skin like this? Well, stick around this video and I'll show you how I did it. My name is The One You Lost. I am a freelance artist and illustrator who focuses mainly on anime. With introductions out of the way, let's get right into the video. Okay, so first things first. What we are going to do is we are going to block out the shadows. That's always the best place to start in my personal opinion. So as you can see here, I'm starting at the belly button because that is the biggest dip in the stomach and usually where the abdomen has a lot of movement to it. All right, so we've blocked out the shadows here. Now we're gonna start refining it a bit. So I would like to advise that if you are going to um, practice lighting and different types of shadows on the stomach and abdomen, um, that you have a good 3D model and a good program to play with the light source. That way you can kind of change up how things look. Um, my recommendation would be if you get a 3D model, get a planar model. Because those are the biggest blocked out shapes that will help you understand the abdomen a bit more. As you can see here, I'm getting the breast done and adding some to the rib cage. I usually will blur edges kind of make it look softer. Even though we start out using hard brushes, we want to soften it later. You can also copy my settings for my blur brush. Um, it's, it's fine, nobody owns settings. <laughs> so the airbrush is used to lighten up areas where light is touching more versus where it isn't touching. I also use the selection pen to get more refined movement. So what you can do with the selection pen is you can create um, you can create areas that are both hard and soft at the same time. I recommend using the selection pen for more refinement. It definitely helps you get and craft your shapes a bit easier. You'll see me do it again here for where the um, for where the tummy meets the uh, the uh, thigh, where we get this triangular shape right here. I will also use it to get some uh, sculpted shape in the abdomen here, where the uh, rib cage meets the tummy. So here I'm flipping the canvas to check to make sure everything looks right, everything's anatomical. Just always flip your canvas. It's it's the best thing you can do. <laughs> So here I add where the light kind of touches the stomach a bit more because it's not going to be hard shadows the whole way through. Um, when you're looking at your reference, make sure that your lighting area is where you're supposed to. And that's what I'm currently doing. Just like I said, with everything, block out your shape and you should be good. If you're liking this video so far, please do me a favor and like comment, subscribe, do all that, hit the bell. It helps a lot and lets YouTube know that I'm doing well. Thank you so much if you do. So, now we're going to be doing my favorite part, which is the belly button, because you can't have a non-detailed one. I'm sorry, it's the rule. So start with the basic shadow, something a little bit darker. As you can see, I don't know if you noticed in the bottom left corner, but I have my own custom swatches of colors that I've used in the past. So whenever you're doing the belly button, remember that there's a divot or like a lip to the top that puffs out a bit. So I always um, kind of highlight that dip by making like an arch that goes around and then blurring it to make it look like there's a little lip there. Sorry, I went away from my microphone there for a moment. Also, I started with line art, but as you'll see as I'm working on this, I actually removed the line art specifically to uh, make it so that it's all rendered.
just keep adding and keep blending it together. Um, if you do too much, you'll definitely know. Just start over. Do it till it looks right. That's at least what I do. There I go, removing the line art. <laughs> so now what we're going to do is we're going to lock the layer transparency and we're going to start adding darker shadows around places where I think light won't be touching very well. I take the, the darker side of the belly button and I just start adding shadow. I also refined the foot a bit because there was something a bit off about it. The glow layer to the brighter parts to kind of make it shine a bit more. Um, I take the entire render and I bounce it to one layer. Now I'm going to add an add glow layer on top and taking kind of a very saturated orange that's leaning a bit more on the red side, I'm going to start going over the bright parts of the artwork. And that's going to make it look like direct sunlight is hitting it. I also add a bit to the uh, clothes as well, that way it kind of just makes it look consistent. Same with the hair. There we go, there are the bright parts of the hair to make it look like, uh, I, lo I love using yellow for Fauna's green hair for the bright parts just because it makes the color balance look so nice. I also brightened up the face a bit. I then merged the layers. I, I don't know if you should always merge the layers, I just did for some reason. Probably a bad idea, but I did it anyway. So now is where we are going to add the wetness. Now, I'm going to explain to you how I do it real quick. So, I take a multiply layer with a very light desaturated um, color that's a bit more on the red side, similar to the skin. Oh, also, I made sure to uh, select only the skin, that way I'm not getting any other layer. We are going to set the layer to multiply. And then we are slowly going to start painting streaks that follow the curvature of the body. And remember that water splits and deviates as it goes down, so make sure to draw like little branching paths. Also, so it doesn't look too hard, it's good to take an airbrush to it and slightly lighten up pieces of it. That way it doesn't become too harsh. Just take an airbrush, turn it into an eraser using the checkered pattern by the color swatches, and that should fix the issue. As you can see here, I'm changing the hue and opacity a bit. That way it matches a bit more with the, the, what I'm using. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add a white highlight to make it look like the wet parts are shining. That is super important if you want it to look fully wet. And with that, we have the finished skin rendering. I hope that helped a lot. If you have any further questions, ask me in the comments and I'll try to cover it in an extended video. Thank you so much. Bye.